between me to gain in thunder, lightning, or in rain. Who the heavenly brother is done when the battle's lost and won? That will be at the set of sun. Where the place? Oh, my dear. They had a meet with Macbeth. I come, great Malkin. How about calls? I'm on. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and fill the air.
and munched and munched and munched. Give me, quoth I, a right the witch, the rump and runyon cries. Her husband, to a level gone, master the tiger, but in a sieve I'll thither sail, and like a rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do, and I'll do. I'll give thee a wind to thy kind. And I another. I myself have all the other. And all the points they blow, all the corners that they know, is the shipman's car. I'll drain and dry his head. Sleep shall neither night nor day. Hang upon his penthouse lid. He shall live a man for a bit. Weary senates, nine times nine, shall he dwindle, he can pine. Though his bark cannot be lost, yet it can be tempest tossed. Look what I have! Show me, show me, show me! Here I have a pilot's son, wrecked as homeward he did come. A drum! A drum! Macbeth doth come! so wild in their attire, they look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are on it. Live you, or you ought that man may question. You seem to understand me, but each at once her choppy fingers lay upon her skinny lips. You should be woman that your beards forbid me to interpret you or so. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of God. All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cardinal. All hail Macbeth that shall be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear that which do sound so fair? And name the truth. Are ye fantastical or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner, you agree with present grace and great prediction of noble having and royal hope that he seems wrapped with all. To me you speak not. If you can look at the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, then speak to me, neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail, hail, hail! Lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy yet much happier. Thou shalt get king, though thou be none. So all hail, Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth all hail. Say it, you and perfect speakers tell me more. By Finel's death, I know I am Thane of Gladys, but how of Cardinal, when the Thane of Cardinal lives a prosperous gentleman? And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief no more than to be Cardinal. Save for whence you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heap you stopped our way? Speak! I charge you! The earth has bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. What we'll seeing corporal melted as breath into the wind. What they can say. For such things here as we do speak about, or are we even on the insane route that takes a reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And say of God or two, and tit not so. To the self same tune and words. Who's here? The king hath happily received Macbeth, the news of thy success. And when he reads thy personal venture in the rebel sites, his wonders and his praises do contend which should be thine or his. Silence with that, and viewing over the rest o' the south same day, he finds thee in the stout Norwegian ranks, nothing to fear of what thyself didst make. Strange images of death, as thick as tale came post to post, and every one did bear thy praises on the kingdom's great defense, and pour them down before him. We are sent to give thee for our royal masters thanks, only to herald thee into this sight, not to pay thee. And for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Condor, in which addition hail most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What? Can the devil speak true? Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? The Thane of Condor lives! He whose Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment, he bears the life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did line his rebel with hidden health and vantage, or with both he labored in his country's back, I know not, but treason's capital confessed and proved have overthrown him. 
Lambs and bane of Cardwell, the best is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do not hope that your children shall be kings, when those that offer the bane of Cardwell to me promise no less to them. That trust at home may yet enkindle you into the crown at the side of the bane of Cardwell. But it is strange, oftentimes, to witness to our arms the instruments of darkness to tell us truths. One of the honest trifles to betray in deepest consequence. Cousins, a word, I pray you. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial fee. But supernatural soliciting cannot be good, I cannot be ill. If ill, why I can pity me with earnest of success commencing in the truth? For I am the fame of God, Lord. But if good, why do I yield to that suggestion's image that can fix my hair, make my seated heart knock against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings, and my thought was murder, yet as my fantastical so shakes my single state of man that functions, and is smothered in some eyes, for nothing is but what is not. Look how our partner's wrapped. Why, if chance may crown me, chance will have me king without my stir. New honors come upon him, like our strange garments cleave not to their mold, but was the aid of use. Come what come may, time and hour run through the roughest day. Where the Macbeth who stay upon your leisure. Kind friends, my dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read. Let us towards the king. Think upon chance, and at more time the infirm having waited, let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very good, sir. Till then enough. Come, friends.
stars hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. For the eye look at the hand, and let that be what the eye fears when it is done to see. True worthy Banquo, he is full so valiant, and in his home the nations I bet. It is a banquet to me. Let's after him, whose care is gone before him that is welcome. It is a fearless kinsman. <laughs> Mousing the air. 
No jutty frieze, but just no coin of vantage, but this bird hath made his pendant bed and procreate cradle. By the most breed and haunt I have observed, the air is delicate. See, see, our honored hostess. The love that follows us sometimes is our trouble, which so we think is love. Herein I teach you how you shall bid God yield us for your pain and thank us for your trouble. All of our service in every point twice done and then done double were poor and single business to contend against those honors deep and broad wherewith your majesty loathes our house. For those of old and the late dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermits. Where's the thing, Caldor? We cursed him at his heels and had a purpose to be his purveyor, but he rides well, and his great love, as sharp as his spur, hath helped him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants ever have theirs themselves, and what is theirs in count to make their audit at your highness's pleasure, still to return your own. Give me your hand. Conduct me to my host. We love him highly, and shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. Oh, worthy cousin, it is good to see you once which, being taught, return to plague and inventor. Oh, this even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. And here is another trust. First, that I am his subject and his kinsman, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against his murder, shut the door to bear the knife himself. And besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his Virtues would plead like angels, trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off, and pity like a newborn babe, or heaven's charabin's horse on the sightless curries of the air to blow the holy deed into every eye. Tears should drown the wind. No, oh, I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent. Only vaulting ambition which all leaps itself and falls upon the he is almost stopped. What have you left the chamber? The Astrid. Know you not? He has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which will be worn now in their newest loss, not cast aside so soon. Is the hope drunk wherein you dress yourself? And it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale when it did so freely. From this time to try count thy love. I tell fear to be the same in thine own act and valor, so are I desire. Wouldst thou have that which thou seek for ornaments of life, and of a coward in thine own scene? Let him I dare not wait upon I would, let the poor cat in the attic. I dare do all that would become a man. Who does do more is none. What beast was there that made you bring this enterprise to me? I mean, dear Stuart, then you were a man. And to be born than what you were, he would be so much more of a man. Your time, your place, and then here, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now to unmake you. I have given suck, and I know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, who smiling in my face, had plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail, we fail. Through your courage to the sticking place, and will not fail. And Duncan is asleep. Where to the rather shall he stay 
his hard journey south of the Invitan. His two chambers, so I, the wine and wine, so so convinced that memory, the warmer, the brain shall be a fume, and the receipts of reason of living back only. When in swinish sleep their trench of nature's lies within a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not, but upon his spongy officers, who shall bear the guilt of our great club? Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked the blood those sleepy two and used their very dyes that they have done? Who dares receive it other when we shall make our griefs to declare a roar upon his death? I am settled and bend up, each corporal allegiance to this terrible feat. Away, mock the tide of the fairest show. False face must hide. Consent in time, it will make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, making my bosom franchise and my allegiance clear. I shall be counseled. Good repose, the last. Thanks, sir. The like dear. Is this a dagger I see before me? A handle toward my hand? Come and be clasped you. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feel in this to sight? Or art thou a dagger of the mind, proceeding the heat of pressed brain? I see thee yet. In form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I once see to use. I put my eyes on the fools of the other senses, or else 
with all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade can touch and count some blood that was not so before. There's no such thing. It is a bloody business that involves us to my eyes. But now, o'er the one half world nature seems dead. Wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep, and witchcraft celebrates pale heads upwards, withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel the wolf whose howl his watch, and with his stealthy pace, with Tar King's ravishing stride towards his design moves like a ghost. Now sure and firm set earth in on my steps which way they walk, for fear that their stone should prate of my whereabouts, and remove present horrors for the time that now suits with it. While I fret he lives, words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go when it is done. The belly bites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Have a made them drunk, hath made me bold. <coughs> Quench them, hath given me fire. <laughs> Tie me to our chambers. A little 
water clears us of this deed. How easy it is then, for constancy hath left you unattended. Hark, we're not going Get on your nightgown, this occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost to poor me in your thoughts. To know my need, to best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, if thou knock at me. I would now could Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were a porter of Hellgate, he should have old turning the key. Knock, knock, who's there in the name of Bessel Bug? Here's a farmer who hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come in time, have napkins. Enough about you. Here you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock, who's there in other devil's name? Faith. Here's an equivocator who could swear in scale against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet couldn't equate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator. Knock, knock, who's there? Faith, here's an English tailor come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Come in, tailor, for here you may roast your goose. Knock, knock, never a quiet, what are you? This place is too cold for help. I'll devil quarter it no further. I ought to let in some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon, anon, I pray you, remember the porter. <laughs> Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed, that you do lie so late? Face, sir, we are cracking to the second cock and drink, sir, the great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? No, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. <laughs> Lechery, sir, provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire that takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator of lechery. It makes him mars and it sets him on and takes him off. He some stand to and not stand to. And therefore equivocates him to a sleep that giving him the lie leaves him. So the drink gave thee the lie last night. <laughs> that it did serve the very thorn me, but I recruited him for his lie. Me things being too strong for him, that he took up my legs sometimes. Yet I made a shift to cast him. Who's thy master stirring? Ah, knocking as awaits a miracle. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thing? Not yet. He did command me to call time, young. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet, tis one. The labor we delight in physics pain is the door. I oh, make so bold to call, but tis my limited service. Goes the king hence today? Yes, he did appoint so. The night hath been unruly where we lay. The chimneys were blown down, and as they say, lamenting tideth their strange screams of death, and prophesying in accents terrible of dire combustion and confused events. New hatch for local time. The obscure bird hammered the livelong night. Some say the earth was feverish and did shake. It was a rough night. <laughs> My own remembrance cannot have another fellow to it. Oh, horror! 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 Tom, more hearts cannot conceive, more than thee. What's, What's the, the matter? matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious mud hath broke off. The Lord's anointed temple, and stole thence the life of the building. How is it you say the life? Mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new one. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourself. Awake, awake, ring the alarm bell. Murder! And treason! Back home! Malcolm! Away! Ah! Shake off this down of sleep! Death's oh. counterfeit! And look on death itself! Up! Up and see the great dunes! Image! Malcolm! Back home! 
wounds here would murder and drown. Oh, Vampo, Vampo, our loyal master's murder. Whoa, who has one in our house? Too cruel anywhere. You have a privy to contradict us on saying this, not so. Had I but died an hour before I lived the first time, or in this instance, there is no seriousness in mortality. All is but torch. But now that his race is dead, the wine of life spent and but the mere leaves is left with bold to brag of. What is it meant? You all would do not know the very stream of the head, the fountain of your life is soft. The very source of it is soft. The royal father's murder. Or by whom? Those in his chamber, it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces we found all bandaged with blood. So too were their daggers which, and wiped we found upon their pillows. They started were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me for in my fury I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate, and furious, loyal, and neutral in an instant? No man. The expedition of my violent love did outrun the pause of reason, but there lay Duncan, his silver skin black with his golden blood, and his gash stabs like a breach in nature for ruins and wasteful entrance. There. The murderer, steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain, but had a heart to love, and in that heart the courage to make love known? Help me, Look today. Why do we hold our tongue that most may claim this argument of ours? What should be spoken here? What? They tear an auger home, they rush and seize us? That's the way our tears are not brutal. Look to the lady. When we have our naked faculties to the suffering exposure, let us meet to question this most bloody piece of work to know of birth. Fear and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God, I stand, and that's against undeveloped freedom, I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So, so do all. Let us briefly put on that in readiness and meet them all together. Well content. <laughs> Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office of the false man to do. All to England, whose daggers and men's smiles, the nearer and blood. The nearer and blood. And this murderous shaft that shot hath not yet lighted. And our safest ways to avoid it. Therefore, of course, and let us not be dainty on the leave taking, but shift away. There is warrant in that theft that steals itself that there is no person.
Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon towering in its pride place was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And don't give horses, a thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race, turned wild in nature, broke their souls, flung out, contend against obedience as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they eat each other. They did so to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon. Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why? See you not? It's known who did this more than bloody deed. Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the king, what good could they pretend? It was Savorn. Malcolm, the king's son, is stolen away and fled. It puts upon him the suspicion of the deed. Hence nature still, a fruitless ambition will brave enough thy own life be. Then, his most like the sovereigns he will fall upon his back. He is already named and gone to Scone to be in the best. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Kunkil, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and the garden of their bones. Will you just go? No, cousin. I'll to fight. Then I will sit Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robe sit easier than our new. Farewell, father. God wants to go with you, and with those that would make good or bad in front of foes. King of your hands all. As a weird word comes, I fear thou place no foul before. It was said it should not stand in thy posterity that myself be the ruined father of many kings. There come truth from none as upon thee, Nick Beth, their speech is shine. Why were the parodies on thee, Nick Beth, knowing my own as well? It's a mere But hush, no more. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast and all fame unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me to which my duties are the most indissoluble tie, forever in it. Ride you this afternoon. I think I'm good boy. We would have also denied your good advice, which would have been both grave and prosperous in this day's good counsel. But we'll take tomorrow. Is it far you ride? As far, my lords, will fill up the time to exist and suffer. Going on my horse the better, I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. I am not our feet. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousin is the soul in England. Not confessing his cruel parasite, filling his ears with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when we'll have cause of state craving us jointly. I you to your horse and you. Goes Leonce with you. I, my good lord, are tired with this call upon us. I wish your horses sure and swift of foot, and do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be the master of his time, till seven at night to make society the sweeter welcome. Ourself will keep us safe till the summertime alone. While then, God be with you. <clears throat> to be thus is nothing but to be sickly thus. Our fears and thankful stick deep. He has a royalty of nature that graves which will be feared. And tis much he dares. For that dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear. For. Under him my genius is rebuffed. As it was said, Mark Antony was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. 
that prophet like the hell and father to a line of kings. Upon my head, they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip. Then to be rest with an ungrenial hand, no son of mine you succeed. For that, the gracious Duncan have I murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them. And given my eternal jewels to the common enemy of man so that they should be kings, the seeds of Banquo kings. It's better to bring fate into the list than champion me to the utterance. Who's here? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, your highness. Well then, have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he, in times past, that held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made good to you, passed in probation with you, how you were born and had, not cross. The instruments that brought with them, which do all things else to a crazed notion, to half a soul, say, thus did Banquo. We made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now the point of our second meeting. And do you find patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Or are you so gospel that you might pray for this good man and for this issue, which has bent you to your grave and bent it yours forever? We are men. My leash. Aye, in the catalogue ye go as men, and as hounds, greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, sows, water rugs, demi wolves are clapped, all in the name of dogs. The valiant file distinguishes between the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter, everyone, according to the gift bounteous nature hath in him clothes, whereby he does receive particular edition of the bill that writes them all the like. If you have station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhood, say it, and I'll put that business in your bosoms, whose execution is our enemies taking off, which grapples you to the heart, and love us, who wears our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, from the vile blows and buffets of the world. I am reckless what to do to spite the world. And I, another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid of it. Both of you know Banquo is your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine, and with the bloody distance that every minute of his life thrusts against the nearest of mine. Though I could, with my barefaced power, sweep him from my sight. Yet I must not, for there are certain friends who are both his and mine whose loves I cannot drop. But where this fail that I myself set down? Thence it is that I to your assistance do make love. To mask the business from the common eye for sundry waiting reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us, though our lives. Your spirit shine through you. Within the hour at most, I'll advise you where to find yourselves. But acquaint you with a perfect spy in time, the moment on it, for it must be done tonight. And something from the palace that I require a clearness. There are to be left no rubs nor botches in the work. Leons, his son that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the same fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, I'll call upon you straight. We are resolved, my lord. Abide within. It is concluded. Thy all thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Not sad. All is spent where our desires got without content. To see them to be that which we destroy, the destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How oh, now, my lord, why do you keep alone? Sorry as fancies your companions make in using those spots which should indeed have died upon them they think of. Things without all remedy should be without regard. Son is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. Oh, she'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of a former tooth. But let the frame of things disjoint. Both worlds suffer. Here we'll eat our meal in fear, and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that haunt us lightly. It's better to be with the dead whom we, to gain our peace, have set to peace, than on the torture of mine to lie in restless ecstasy. 
Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst, nor steel, poison, malice, domestic, foreign, levy, nothing can touch him further. Come on! Gentle, my lords, take over your rugged walks. Be bright and jovial amongst your guests tonight. So shall I, love. And so I pray to you. But let your remembrance supply to Banquo, present him an eminence with both the eye and the tongue that we should lay in our flattering honors in these streets and make our faces visible to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and Fleance live. But in their nature's copies, not eternal. There's comfort yet. They are unassailable. Be thou jocund. Ere the batteth flow in his cloistered flight, and pale Hecate summons the shard or beetle with his drowsy arms hath wrung night's yawning peal. There will be done a deed of dreadful night. What's to be done? The innocence of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, to thou applaud the deed. Come. Sealing the night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful enemy with thy bloody and invisible hand. Cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. The light thickens, and the crow begins to make wing to the rooky wood, whilst the good of day begins to drop and drowse <coughs> night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvelous of my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun may good themselves by ill. So pretty, go. Sides or even here, I'll sit in the midst. Be large and mirth, we'll drink a measure, the table round. There is blood upon thy face. It's better thee with him than he without. Is he dispatched? My lord can throw the cup that I did for him. Thou art the best of cupmates. He be good that but the likes for fields. Thou didst, thou art no imperial. Most royal, sir. Fleance escaped. Then comes my fit again, or else I were perfect. Oh, as marble as founded in the rock, as broad and general as the castle had ever now. And cabin, cribbed, confined, bound into the saucy doubts and fears. But thank you, sir. I, my good lord. Safe in a ditch, he bides with twenty trashed gashes in his head, the least adept to nature. Thanks for that. Here the grown serpent lies with a worm that's fled hath a nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get me gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. I worry that my royal lord should not keep the cheer. Feast is sold that is not often vouched for to make it given with welcome. To feed with us at home. Then, soft to meet the ceremony, needing or bear without it. Sweet remembrance, or good digestion before appetite, and health on both. 
We might have had our country's honors roof were the graced person of our bank roll present, who I may rather challenge an unkindness rather than pity your mischance. His absence, Sir Lady Wayne, on his promise, please that your highness to grace us with your royal company. And the table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. What? Him, my good lord. What is the moves, your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say that I did it. Never shake thy glory, rocks of him. Gentlemen, rise, your kindness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often enough and hath been from his youth. Pray you keep seats. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought he will again be well. Much you know him, you shall abandon him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? Aye. And a bold who would dare look on that which would appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff! This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you send the legend to Duncan. All these flaws and starts and busts are such a fear. Would well become a woman's story in which his fire authorized in the cradle. Shame itself! Why do you make such faces? When all of a sudden you look on a stool. You see there, I look behold, lo. Why, what care I, thou canst not then speak to? If Charles' house is an hour of graves, must send those that they bury back. Our monuments are for the Mars of Caius. What's quite unmerited folly? If I stood here, I saw it. Fuck, shame! Blood has been shed. Here, now, in the olden time. I since two murders have been prepared. Too terrible for the year. The time has been when the brains were out, the man would die in their end. But now they rise again, twenty mortal murderers on their crowns, to push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do black you. I do for you. Most worthy friends. I have an infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and help to all, then I'll sit down. Bring me some wine, fill full. And I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our friend Banquo, who we miss. Would he were here, to him and all we first. And all, to all. Our duties and the pledge. Upon to quit my sight, dear thy deed. Thy bones are malice, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation, no darkness, thou must dwell. Think of this, good Pierce. Because the thing of custom is no other only its voice, the pleasure of the time. What man dare lie there? A punch down at the rugged Russian man. Beyond my nostrils, dark and tired, and to get it born with that. In my firm nerve shall never tremble. Well, come alive here, and challenge me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I am epic, then protest me, the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence. And what art thou being born? I am a man here. Bring your sister! You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meaning of most admired disorder. Can such things be that overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe. And even now to think you could behold such sights and keep the natural rose of your cheeks from my unblanched with fear. What sights, my I pray you speak not! He grows worse and worse, question and rages him. Once connect, stand not upon the order of your going, go at once. Good night. But how to tend his majesty. Kind good night to all. It will have blood. Blood will have blood, they say. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Arms and other stipulations have by maggots, pies, and truss and rooks brought forth the secretest man of blood. What is the night? Who was it thought of? How is it you say Macduff denies his presence at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way, but I will send. 
for there is not one but in this palace that I keep a servant feed. I will to morrow, and betimes I will to the way of the sisters. Nor shall they speak, for I am meant to know the worst by the worst means for my own good. And all causes shall be wake. I have stepped in blood so far that to return now was as tedious as a gold. And I have strange things in head to build to heaven. They must be done here. They will be scattered. You love the season of all nature. Sleep. Come. Well, to sleep. My strange and self abuses of the nation fear and once are used. Yet we are the young people. Gone to England to pray upon the Holy King and 
weight from our dominant and more like serious, that by the help of these, with them above, to ratify their work, we may give meat to our tables, sleep to our nights, free our feasts and banquets from bloody knives, do faithful homage and receive free honors, all of which we pine for now. And this report had so exasperated the king that he now prepares for some attempt of war. Oh, say to the top! He did. And with an absolute stern on eye, the cloudy messenger turns me his back and hums, as who should say, you'll rue the time that clogged me with his answer. Ah, and thou well mine! Oh, advise him to recall you to hold what wisdom his distance can provide. Some holy angel lies the cause of England and unfold his messengering wrong, that a swift blessing will soon return to this, our suffering country under our own cross. I'll send you my prayers. <coughs> Macbeth. Had I three years, I heard thee. Be 
body, fold and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff, what need I fear of thee? Yet all make assurance is double sure to take upon the fate that shall not live, that I may tell the pale haunted fear and rise and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises with the issue of a king, and upon his baby brow the top and round of sovereignty? Listen, that see not should. Be lying, metal, proud, shall take no care of chips who frets or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquish to be until the great Burnham Wood to hide Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. That shall never be? Who can impress the forest, mid the tree, and fix his earth on roots? Sweet Bodman's good! Rebellious dead rise, never till the wood of Burnham rise, then our high place Macbeth shall live the lease of nature, and pay his breath to time and mortal custom. But yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if thou art can tell so much, shall Banquo's issue and reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Why sinks the cauldron? What is that noise? Show, show, show. Show his eyes, grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too much like the spirit of Banquo down. I crowd the seer my eyeballs in thy hair. How the golden bound brow is like the first. A third like the former. A filthy hands, why do you show me this? A fourth, soft eyes, what will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet, a seventh I'll look no more. And if an eighth appears, who bears a glass that shows me many more, and some I see, two full balls, treble scepters carry, horrible sight! Now I see it is true as the blood bolter Banquo smiles upon me and points at that face. Ay, sir, all this is so, but why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, chew we up the sprites and show the best of our delight. I'll charm the air to give a sound while you perform your antic round that this great king may kindly say our duty did his buck. Hey. Where are they? Gone? In that this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without them. What is your grace's will? Saw you, the weird sisters? No, my lord. Can they not buy you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air on they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I didn't hear the galloping of a horse who was a cave by. Tis two or three, my lord, that this word Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? I am the boy. Time now anticipated my dread exploits, and the flighty purpose has never overtook us the deed go with it. From this moment, let the fistlings of my heart be the fistlings of my head. The new now to crown my thoughts with acts be thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise and send to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. But no boasting like a fool. This deed all do till the purpose cool, so no more sights. Where are these gentlemen? Come, bring me where they are. You must have patience, madam. He had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not our fears, we make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom. To leave his wife. To leave his babes. To leave his mansions and his titles in a place from whence himself was fly. He loves us not. 
lost the natural touch. The poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight. The young ones in the nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little is the reason, so I am fight to run against the reason. My dearest cousin, I pray you school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. Cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. When we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea, each way and none. I take my leave of you. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessings upon you. Father he is, and yet he's fatherless. I am so much a fool should I stay longer. It would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. This 
times. So named blisters our tongues as once thought honest. You have loved him now. He had not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may discern of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. I am not treacherous, but the beck is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil an imperial charge. No. Well, I shall pray your pardon. That's what you are, my heart cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. For all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. I am lost. My hope! Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you wife and child, those precious motives, those strong nuts of love, without leave taking? I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but mine own sins. You may be rightly just whatever I shall think. Believe. Believe, poor country. Great tyranny. Lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness, dare not check thee. Wear thou thy wrongs, the title is a fear. I would not be the villain that thou fears, for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp, and the rich east to boot. Be not offended. I speak not in absolute fear. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day another gash is added to our wounds. I think with all lowly hands uplifted in my might, and here from gracious England have I offer up of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon or wear it on my sword. I think my poor country shall have more vices than it did before. More suffer in more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself. I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of life so grafting that when they are opened, black Macbeth shall seem as pure as snow in the poor estate Esteem him as a land being compared with my confineless hearts. Not in the legions of horrid hell. Become a devil more damned than evil, to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. There is no fault. None. To my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust and my desire. All constant impediments no avail that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such a one to me. Boundless in temper. In nature, it is a tyranny. It has been the untimely ending of the happy throne and fall of many kings. You do not fear to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures as a spacious plenty, and yet seem cold. The time you make so hoodwink. We have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding them so inclined. With this, there grows in my most ill composed affections such a staunchness as this that where I came. I would cut off the nobles from their lands, 
desire, his jewels in the other's house, and my poor having and right is a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper, grows with more pernicious root than some seeming lust. And it hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet, do not fear. Scotland hath foisons to fill up your will of your mere own. All these are portable, <coughs> with other graces laid. But I have none. The king becoming graces, justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, loneliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime acting in many ways. Nay, had I power, I would pour the sweet milk of conquered into hell, a broad and universal peace. Confound all unity on earth! Oh, Scotland! Scotland! Is such a one be fit to govern? Speak! I am as I have spoken! Fit to govern? Not to live. Oh, nation miserable. With an untitled tyrant. Blood set. When shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Since that. The truest issue of thy throne. By his own interdiction. Stands a curse, and does blaspheme his breed. Thy royal father was the most sainted king. The queen that bore thee oftener upon her knees than on her feet. Die every day she lived. Very well. These evil. Thou repeat'st upon thyself, and banished me from Scotland. Oh, my breast, I hope I'm dear. But thou, the snow path, trouble of integrity, Half of my soul wipe the black scruples and reconcile myself to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, has sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from over credulous haste. But God above, deal between me and thee. For even now, I put myself in thy direction and unspeak mine own detraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself. For strangers to my I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted that was mine own. At no time, grow my faith, I will not betray the devil to his fellow. I delight no less in truth than in life. And my first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am true is thine, and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed, and before thy here approach, old Seward, with ten thousand warlike men, was already the point setting forth. Now, we'll together, and the chance of goodness be like our warm to quarrel. Why are you silent? Such welcome. 
and unwelcome things at once. It is hard to reconcile. See, who comes here? My countryman. Yet I know not. My ever gentle cousin. Welcome here. I know him now. Good God, you clients, remove the means that make us strangers. Sir, amen. Stand Scotland, where it is. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Where nothing but who knows nothing is one seen to smile. Where sighs and shrieks and groans that rend the air are made not marked. Where violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy. The dead man's knell is there scarce as for who and good men's lives expire before the flowers in their caps <laughs> dying or in a thicket. Relation too nice and yet too true. What is the news grief? That of an hour's age don't miss the speaker. Each minute teams a new one. How does my wife? Why, well. And all my children. Well, too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace. They were well at peace when I did leave them. Are you not a niggard of your speech, how goes? When I came hither to transport the tidings that I had heavily borne, there ran a rumor of many worthy fellows that were out, which was to my belief witness the rather for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Now is the time to help. <coughs> Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be to their comforts we are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us old silver than ten thousand men, and older and better soldier none than Christendom gives out. But I can answer this comfort with the like. But I have words that would be howled in the desert air where hearing should not match them. It would concern them. In the general cause, or is it a uh, gay grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in a cheersome world. So, the main part pertains to you alone. Give me mine. Give it not from me. Quickly, let me out. Let not your ears despite my tongue, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound they ever yet heard. <coughs> Things were that the most righteous 
to me. The devil looked on and would not take that path, sinful Macduff. They were all struck for thee, not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine. Oh, slaughter on their soul. Heaven, rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Convert grief to anger, blood of the heart, and rage it. Oh, I could play the woman with my eyes and braggart with my tongue. Cut short all intermission, front to front. Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself. Within my sword's let set him. If he escape, heaven will give him to This tune goes madly. Come, go into the king, our power is ready. Alack is nothing but our lead. Macbeth is right for the shaking, and powers above, put on your instruments. Proceed what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day.
We'll see from there to bed. Yeah. Oh, what springs are abroad? A natural deed to breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds and their death pillows charge their secrets. More need to divide than the physician. God. God make us all. Look after her. Move for her the means of all annoyance and still keep eyes of her. So, good night. My mind, she has made it amazing my sight. <clears throat> Dare not speak. <laughs> Yeah. 
death, no obeying Joe Burn, I'm going to come to Dunson. His hour upon the stage and then he's heard no more. It is a tale, told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Fear or none. What is thy name? 
Don't be afraid, dear. No, though I call myself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name is Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, nor one more fearful. Thou liest a poor tyrant. Put my blade off from the light thou speakest. <laughs> Thou wast born of woman. The sword I smile at, muffins laugh to scorn, brandished by man that's a woman born. Let's wait! The noises!
king. For so thou art. Time is free. I see compass with thy kingdom's power that speak my salutation in their mind, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first in ever such an honor Scotland named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home those friends, exiled abroad, who fled the snares of this watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his female queen, who as this thought, by self and violent hands took off her life. What needful else that calls upon us? And by the grace of grace, we shall perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each own, whom we invite to see us crowned at Scone.
I would like to take this opportunity uh, on behalf of the cast to thank uh, Ms. Hester. Who, for, uh, thank you. I was a little bit smaller in the second grade. Uh, and so we wanted to thank you, and it's nice that we were able to leave together. myself um, and has helped sculpt me into the man that I have become and I have found that his work not only as an artistic director of theater but has you know taught me how to carry myself as a man and as an individual in this world and I find every day Buck Aaron, that your teachings uh, for all the time that I've known you have helped me to be the person that I am and I would be eternally grateful for that so come up here and
Jane Deering here, our, our founder of Photon. Way back when I first started uh, here in nine, about 96, probably started probably in 94, with, I did it called Music Moms. Yeah. Did get, the Music Moms. <laughs> they became the, 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 uh, the, the, the friends of the arts. And so Jane is here, her son, son Claude's an actor in LA, and great friend. And so it's great to have Jane back. So. Karina also then took the, the reins of Photon at some point. Uh, PCA in the last two years, she's been there for every phone call, every little bit of something. What do you need? Where are we? What's gone wrong? How can I help? A great, great source of, of, of wonderful commitment to ASL. And I just want to say we'll miss you too as you move this year too. Uh, as an architect, she designed the houses, the fronts of the houses for Avenue Q, and started there with us, and then has then since been with Res when we, they bring the costumes over for us from Germany, uh, from one of the military bases, uh, and they, as she's been here for us for everything, again, calls and just support, and maybe we're going to miss you guys a lot, so thank you. Ten years ago, I met Sue Solinsky. She was also one of the Photon moms. Uh, Sue's daughter, uh, Molly, has been left us five years ago, four years ago. Five years ago. Uh, and Katie before that, before that. Yet Sue has made every poster, every program, even since that time. Uh, her and her husband, Jim, are moving back to the States. And I'm going to break my heart. So I'm going to miss you times, but we'll see each other. And, and Sue said, well, I can still do the, so do the posters and stuff. <laughs> so, so she's not really leaving us, but Sue, Sue, thank you for everything. You're just <laughs> That's what comes alive. That's what you guys get. Yes, yes, it's funny. We've got new mirrors. We've got blood on the wall. I can do that. But, but I must say, it, it's really his ability and getting in there with those kids and inspiring them that, that Warren, uh, you, you, you know, you've just, you just been a joy. And, and thank you so much for your commitment. I really appreciate it. So besides the work they're doing here, they're actually directing films as well. So it's quite exciting. I would like all the seniors to please come out here. <laughs> 